Don't want to mislead. This is all you need. Be your everything. Yeah, I'll be your everything. Still too soon to feel. Please just say it's real. More than just a thrill. Not just in it for the thrill. I'm in it for the love. Cause love it needs to touch it. All right, everybody, here we go. Hope you're having an amazing day. Let's jump in, let's see who there. Lolly's in the house, what's up, Lolly? Gertie's in the house, how you doing, Gertie? Rosani, hello, how you doing? Wait a second, let me get in here. Let me join you. Where are we go? there we go. Uh-oh, I'm a ghost. I'm super white. You can, I, you can only see my eyes. I'm, this is not a Canadian tan. There's something wrong with the camera. Thankfully, Julian's here today. Thankfully, Julian is here to fix this. Look, you can basically only see my eyes. I'm so white. Fun. Okay, let's get that fixed up. Give me a tan, Julian. Make me beach worthy. Like this? Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Colombian. I'm Colombian now. Still very white. Do you Less need, sick. I do need so some. I do go. need some beach. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. I think we're rolling now. Now why? This is a little different, but that's okay. Oh, are you on a different? What's this? Why is this like this? This is. What's happening? Oh, that's normal, I guess. I guess we're normal here. This. One, why do I feel like some? Profile. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, we're good. Oh, we're good. Okay. Should be okay. All right. Good. All right. So let's get into it. Kent needs some sun. That's the lesson of the day. Can all go home now. Or not. Let's keep going. Uh, Weepy One, great name. Hello, how you doing? Uh, who else we got here? Kamal, hello, how you doing? Welcome. I see some new names here. Haider, what's up from Iraq? Ooh, we have an Iraqi in the house. Cool. 
Uh, Nana's back. How you doing, Nana? Nana is always in difficult with her tests. I hope you're doing all right, Nana. Who else we got? Pilar is back. Finally, Pilar, where have you been? Back in here. Tatiana's back. What's up, Tatiana? Munira's back. What's up, Munira? Uh, who else we got in here? Gabby's in the house. What's up, Gabby? Ahmed's back. Denise is back. The good Canadian Denise. Maya's back. It's about midnight in Moscow, ready for the lesson. Yes, we're, we're on it. We're going. I promise, Maya. Let's do this. Maria's back. What's up, Maria? Amini's in the house. What's up? I'm doing good, Amini. Uh, Karina's back. How you doing? Who else we got here? Scroll, scroll, scroll. And Lise, hello. How you doing? Carlos is back. What's up, my man? Rodrigo's in the house. Rodrigo's very excited about this lesson. It's not the one you're thinking about, Rodrigo, but I appreciate you bringing some, some great new slang to the class. Can you please explain what that means? Actually, no, wait. Don't explain what that means. I, I think... I got it, and if anyone else wants to know, you can ask Rodrigo in your own time. Uh, who else we got in here? Yvonne, what's up? How you doing? Areej is back. What's up, Areej? She hasn't been back for a while. Suedo, how you doing? Juju, great name. How you doing? Only Human, great. It's good to be Only Human, is back. Rehab is back. Uh, Nadia, hello. Alex, hello. American English with Fadil. Hello, Fadil. Uh, you're gonna, Fadil, why don't you just teach this class today? I'll take a break, you come in, you do the American English thing, and uh, I'll just take a break and hang out. Uh, Yvonne, nice name, yes. All right, here we go. So here's what we're gonna do today. Let me start you off with your question of the day, because I know you require it before we get going. So here we go, number one. Let me make this a little bigger. Number one is this, question of the day is, what are some new ways, what are some ways to break your daily routine and try something new? Okay, so maybe some people are stuck. Maybe they do the same thing every day. It's kind of boring. You need a break. What can I do to, to fix this problem? I feel like, oh, you know what? Every day, just going through the motions, doing the same thing. I need a break. I need a change in my life. So please give me some advice. What can I do? Maybe this is my personal problem. Maybe I need to break my routine. What can I do and how can I do it? And I promise I'm leading into something here, but give me a few answers. Uh, what can people do to break their daily routine? Give us some ideas. Juju is fasting, for example, in Ramadan. Uh, <laughs> I guess I could start fasting, Juju. That's uh, for 30 days. I don't think I'd make it, but I, I appreciate that you're doing it. Uh, what else we got? Rodrigo, what do you got here? I'm in the house, more exactly in the dump. No, you're not. You're doing all right, Rodrigo. You're in my favorite country. You're in Australia. I know you're doing fine. Uh, Imini, just dance. That could be the best advice of the day. Just, just wiggle it just a little bit. Nana, hang out with some friends to, and go to new places. Also good advice. Rodrigo, committing crime is illegal. I don't recommend that to any of you. Uh, don't be a Rodrigo. Just don't do it. For me, just wing it. Wing what, Ahmed? Wing it, good expression when you, it means you kind of just try something without really practicing it, but what would you wing? Uh, Lolly, go to bed early, get up at dawn. Sounds terrible, Lolly. I'm never gonna do that. Pilar, put on your headphones and dance for a while and relax, okay? A lot of dancing advice, this is great, okay? Sure, I guess uh, dancing fixes everything. Play sports. Good advice. That's cool as well. Nadia, play some sports. Mix it up. I guess break your routine. Do anything you want and just try something new is probably the answer here. Okay, so there we go. Go for a random walk. Give up drinking beer, Lolly. Oh, I know, Lolly. Lolly, I have to tell you something, but it's, it's, there's other things out there. There, there. there are other things out there. So I want you to go and try something new. Uh, Imini, try to fast for half a day. I know you can't do it for 30 days. I know you're right, Imini. I definitely couldn't do it for 30 days. Probably couldn't do it for a half day. I like food. Uh, Gabby, I guess following the trend of ordering whatever the person in front of you ordered, the internet has weird trends. That it does. Spending time with in English, so spending time using English is a good way to relax. I don't know, but maybe. Uh, Karina, I schedule some different options in my week. Weeks are big, so we go inside weeks. Schedule some different options in my week. Study English, do exercises, have fun with my husband. Cool. So you schedule some times to do something new. Great advice. All right, so um, I'm leading to something here, but nobody actually used the word that I wanted you to use. And the word I wanted you to use today is, for example. So today, we're going to do some 
IELTS style, FCE style. I know you guys love the IELTS and the FCE and the CAE and the PTE and the academic English and all those crazy things that we have. So today we're going to look at some more words we use. So let me hit you with some big words today. And the th words I want you to learn, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about exemplification. Say it together. Exemplification in English. What does that mean? Why did Kent use a big word? Does he try? To, is he trying to th be smart? It means example, for example. But we have another word. We have a noun, which we call exemplification. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at different ways that you can give examples, which is good for your writing, good for academic English, good for IELTS, good for FCE, good for speaking English generally, and putting things, giving examples of things. Are you ready? Here we go. So number one, let's do this. Number one, let's please take take, an, take a copy of this document so you will have all the wonderfulness that we're going to work on today. Hello, Homer. How you doing? Uh, Sheka, what's up? In my free time, reading is a great idea. Good for you. Uh, Richard, play the drums. That's a great idea. I used to play the drums. Uh, Simplank uh, didn't notify me. I'm not sure. To click the subscribe button, and there's also, I believe, there's also a notifications button. There's a subscribe and notifications. Make sure to click both of them, and then you should be good. Hello, Acel. How you doing? All right. So here we go. So this is the document. Please take it, take it one more time in case you didn't get it the first time, and then you'll have access to everything that we're going to work on today. Shall we begin? Oh, the little animals are coming in. Yay, little animals. Anonymous panda, anonymous wombat. Here we go. So here's number one. Number one is pretty straightforward. Uh, so I'd like you to finish this idea with your own idea. I'm using a really easy word. Number one. There are many ways to learn English, to learn a second language. Sorry, it's not just English. There's French, there's Spanish, there's Arabic, there's Farsi. There's lots of languages. There's Azerbaijani, I think. There are many ways to learn a second language. For example, now give us, give us an example. What is, one, what is one thing that you could do to learn a second language? OK, give us an example. You could watch smart videos. That's the answer of the day, Nana. High five. You got it. That's a great answer. You could hang out with us. And if anyone's kind of interested, I believe Kareem, you know Kareem, Kareem's dream stream is going to be coming back, I believe. Hang in for that. That's going to be amazing. Uh, subs, no notification. Eh, sorry. Anyways, uh, Simplank, every, every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Canadian time, in Vancouver time, and 3 p.m., sorry, 2 p.m., 2 p.m. 2 p.m. on Wednesday, Vancouver time. 2 p.m. on Thursday, Vancouver time. We are here. We're generally here. There's no breaks. Reading books in another language. Great idea, Lamini. That's cool. For example, you could listen to music. Yeah, learn English and learn French and learn Spanish through songs. Great way. I think it helps your pronunciation. I think it helps you to recognize the connection. So sometimes when I speak really fast, you might not understand what I say because there's a lot of connection between the words. Maybe when you listen to songs, that's going to help you to recognize the, the, the squishing that goes on between words. It's called elision, I believe, when, it, when you get words which are kind of connected. Like, what are you going to do tonight? We don't say that. We say, what are you going to do tonight? So it changes a little bit. OK, next. Oh, good. Here we go. Next one. So what else we got? Do we got any more? You could watch TV in English. You could listen, listen, no listening, listen to podcasts following F-O-L-L, -L, following a text. Yes, you could do that. That's a nice idea as well. Audiobooks. Sometimes you can read the book, and you can also listen to the book at the same time, like Harry Potter or something like that. Great idea, because you want the listening and you want the reading. So it's just, why not get both at the same time? Audiobooks and uh, real books together. Same text. Great idea. Super good idea. Reincarnation may help you. Yes, Vlad, that might be the best way. Be reincarnated as an English speaker. So if you have access to reincarnation, I suggest all of you do that. No more problems with languages. Um, nothing can help me learn Russian. Well, yeah, Rus Russian is probably tough, I imagine. Uh, you could try hard. You could. I could study hard, like me, and speak six languages. You, whoa, that's a lot of languages, Rodrigo. That's impressive. 
For example, working, working, for example, don't forget your comma, don't forget your comma, juju. That's a teacher, that's a, that's a bugaboo, that's a no-no, teachers will tell you. For example, working on your four main skills, like listening, comma, reading, comma, speaking, and writing. There you go. Okay, cool. Read a great book. Yep, great advice. Listen to Pilar. Listen to, don't forget that. Listen to interviews. Great idea. Uh, are audiobooks? Yes. Uh, Narayana, I believe audiobooks are really awesome. Uh, I would, like I said, I think it's great to do listening, but I think if you have the reading, the book, and the audiobook together, much better. But yeah, books are huge. Books are huge for your. If you're not reading books, you, you, if you're not reading books, you should be because you are missing so much easy learning by reading books. So that's really the advice of the week, of the century, read books. And you, I promise you will be a much, 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 much better English speaker and you don't have to learn grammar words, vocab words, adjectives, nouns as much. You still should learn those, but not as much. Number two, here we go. Next one is number two. Guys, you know what? Being me is not easy. It's actually kind of it's kind of hard being me. <sighs> you know why? You know, to give you an idea, I have to wake up early every day. I have to wake up early. And that's a killer for me. I don't like waking up early. I would rather sleep in late, go to bed late, and then teach teach my classes at like 1 p.m., 2 p.m. Okay. That sounds amazing. That would be great. So being, being me is hard. To give you an idea, I have to wake up early every day. Tell me about you. Being you is hard? Is it? And tell us why. Always give us a why. So tell us about yourself. To give you an idea, Nana, I always watch a lot of videos while I'm cooking the dinner. No, Nana, no. Being you is, that, is that difficult? That doesn't sound difficult. You need a difficult idea because I said being me is hard. So now your next, your sentence, your second sentence must also be an explanation about hard things. The, the sentence of the ideas have to match, but w the second sentence is more specific. Give me an example. Uh, yeah. Arich says, because you're fancy, you're a fancy boss, so being you is not an easy thing. I am a little fancy, Arich. Thank you for noticing. Very nice. Uh, Denise, being me is hard. To give you an idea, there is a bad luck. There is bad luck. Mm, no a bad luck. Just b luck is uncountable because it's something in the mind. So there is bad luck. Or you could better yet say just bad luck always follows me. It doesn't matter where I am. Hmm. Really? You're just an unlucky person, Denise? That would, be, that would be rough. I mean, I don't know. I feel like people also make their own luck. So what are you doing? What are you doing that's creating this bad luck? Maybe you can just get rid of it, Denise. What do you think? I got it wrong. Pilar, to give you an idea, I don't have time for me. Me, sometimes, because of my job. Ah, oh, Pilar, that's rough. I hear you. I hear you. It's tough when you don't have time for yourself. You need time to be you, do you things, either hang out or just do things you want to do. I agree. You need time. What else we got? Lolly, to give you an idea. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling Jimmy Fallon here. Do you guys know Jimmy Fallon? When he goes... He does some kind of segment where he goes, he speaks like that. Anyways, to give you an idea, I'm always obsessed with learning English. Is that bad, Lolly? Is that a bad thing that you're always obsessed with learning English? Does that make it difficult to you? I guess it could be if you're really crazy about it and you focus on it way too much. Could be. Uh, Juju. Oh, wait. Rodrigo, I have to kill heaps of crocs to survive. I would like you to send me a picture of the croc you kill. Rodrigo, <laughs> please send me one. Juju, uh, to give you an idea, comma, Juju, don't forget your commas. Uh, to give you an idea, I fast for 30 days, oof, while I work. Know that. No, just while I work and study. That's tough. Good luck to you, Juju. That's, uh, Yamini, you're a student? Uh, that's not so bad. I work, Yamini. So if you're a student, I don't feel sorry for you. The student life is probably pretty awesome. Wait till you work. Only human, to give you an idea, I cannot fit into, into the surroundings around me. So only human, you feel like you're a different type of human than the other humans? Well, don't worry, only human, you fit in perfectly with the smart, with the cool, smart group. So you're all good. You're all good over here. Uh, last one, 
Narayan. Oh, wait, who we got here? Uh, a reach. Because being me is hard. Because being me is hard. To give you an idea, I want you to use that word. To give you an idea, I have an eye for detail? Mm, sure about that one. Why is being you hard? That's the real question here. OK, so anyways, this word. And you can see they're kind of similar. So we're looking at a lot of similar words today, but I'm also going to change those words a little bit. Next one. Let's talk about animated movies, shall we? Number three. Next one. Uh, let me, I'll do a few more while I'm doing that. Uh, noir, noir, being me is hard because, mm, no, okay, so guys, please use, I would like you to use, see those little that and that, use those words because this is really the lesson for today. It's using these words, for example, to give you an idea. So really use them because I, I promise you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, some, I'm trying to show you a good variety of ways to use these type of words. And when do we use them and why do we use them? So try to use them. Uh, let's do another one here. Uh, Nana, to give you an idea, sometimes I have three exams in the same day. Ah, but I finished, I have finished, finished, have finished them now. Thanks. Thank the Lord. Alex, being me is hard to give you an idea. I work 13 hours a day. Alex, that is hard. That's rough, dude. I feel for you. Hang in there or make it or make a change. I'm not sure. Karina, I wake up at 5 a.m. to study with a mentor and I work all day, no four just all day. I work all day, then I study English when I, when I arrive at, when I arrive home, and I have to make dinner and clean the house and give attention to my husband. You're busy. You're busy, Karina. I feel for you. All right, Kate, okay, next one. I'm going to jump. I'm going to skip. Sorry if I didn't get yours, but I'm going to go on to the next one. Many great animated movies have been made, have been created. Let's look at some animated movies, shall we? Animated movie gifts. What would I do without gifts? I mean, before I wasn't using them, but now I can't stop using them. Those are good gifts. Oh, you know this one. This is a classic. You know which one this is, right? That's got to be up for sure. What is that? Don't know what that is. That's up again. Oh, this is great. This one was awesome. Uh, what was this? This was the in Despicable, Despicable Me. Love that movie. That was great. Do you remember that one? That was a good one. What else we got here? I don't know what that is. Angry Birds. I've never seen that. Is it? I don't know if it's funny. I guess it could be good. What else we got? Uh, I want animated. Movie. The B movie. Oh yeah. Well, some of this was animated. That's for sure. And yeah. Oh, the Minions. Yeah, this one's great. This was the same movie, Despicable Me. Really awesome. I'm gonna keep those guys in the background. Coke is my favorite. So here's a sentence. I'll come back to it. And now I want you to use, I want you to finish this sentence. Many great animated movies have been made, such as. So finish that sentence, such as Frozen. Yeah, Frozen was a good one. Uh, such as The Detective. Don't know that one. Such as The Simpsons. Well, The Simpsons is an animated movie, but it's an animated TV show. Okay, cool. Baby Boss, Frozen, Anastasia, Frozen and Sleeping Beauty, Anastasia. What is Anastasia? Angry Birds, Coco, B Movie, Baby Boss, Minions are great. I agree. Finding Nemo, yeah, those were all good. Many great animated movies have been made, such as How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, and my friend worked on How to Train Your Dragon, so she's pretty awesome. Shout out. Uh, Peter Pan, Mulan, Frozen. I gotta see this one. What is everyone talking What is Anastasia? Anastasia. What is it? Show me. Is it, an, it looks like an old one. Is it an old one? Everybody's talking about this. Oh, it's, it's Russian, isn't it? Maybe it's not that old. It's probably not that old. Oh, what is it? 1997. Oh, okay. I've never seen that one. That's, a, that's one that I have not seen. I like the Minions. Okay, there we go. Cool. Uh, next one. So, again, using the word such as. So you can see there's a connection between all these sentences here. Next one, uh, here. This one you might actually have to do some research for it. So here's the next sentence. Maybe I will. Maybe I will watch that movie. OK, next one. Uh, next idea is here. Uh, number four. Let's get rid of these ones. There are many famous people in the world who became successful without going to university. 
A good illustration of this is da da da. So who is da da da? Give me a da 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 answer. What is a who is a good illustration of somebody who who went to went to uni didn't go to university and still became very famous? Give us an answer. Who do you got? Trump. Let's see. Did Trump go to university? I know Bill Gates didn't. No, nope. sorry, Rodrigo. He went to university. It says he went to. I think it says here. Yeah, he went to. No, nope, he went to university. Trump is. <laughs> there you go. Who we got? The founder of AliExpress. Uh, oh, Jack Ma. Did Jack Ma go to university? Let's find out. <laughs> he has one. Uh, Jack Ma, no, no, no. He was a university. No, he was an English teacher. Really? Jack Ma. Do you guys know Jack Ma? This is the guy. He created, uh, what was it? AliExpress. Which is a, basically a really cheap web uh, website with, I think, sells a lot of Chinese products. But this guy was an English teacher. Oh, that's fun. There you go. Didn't know that. Who else we got? What else you got? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know. You might have to Google it. I, I don't know any of these answers. Einstein? I don't know. No guessing. You got to Google it. You got to go out and Google it. I, so if you're sure, put that name. Madonna? Steve Jobs? Yes. I know Steve Jobs is true. X, 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 X. Uh, Steve Jobs didn't go to university. Or was it Bill Gates? Bill Gates, I know he didn't go. Steve Jobs, probably not. I, th I feel like he dropped out as well. Keen Reeves? Eminem? Probably Eminem. A good illustration of this is Lady Gaga. This person is a crazy woman. Not a man. She's a woman. Jackie Chan. No, he was a teacher. Khaled. Yeah. Oh, that's, why, that's what I got. Okay. So anyways. So here's another way you can say a good illustration of this is finish the sentence. Very nice. Steve Jobs dropped out of university. That sounds right. Einstein dropped out of school. Okay. Let's, let's check it out. Did Einstein go to university? Mm. Well, it said he went to university. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, anyways, guess we don't know. It takes a little bit of time to find the answer to that. And I'm impatient. Here we go. Aha! Great one. Anybody see Endgame? Let's talk about it. So here's one. Number five. Superheroes often have alter egos. Do you know an alter ego? Uh, so for example, Spider-Man was a news reporter and Superman was also a news reporter. Why? Not very creative. But they had alter egos, so they had different identities. So all, we say alter egos when we talk about superheroes or spies or something like that. A case in point is, so give us an example. I gave you two. Give us another one. Yeah, Gertie, you got it. Batman. Oh, that was my Halloween costume a few years ago. Should have won first prize, but I did not. Next year, redemption. But I, I won last year. I was a giant robot last year at my ESL school. First prize. Yeah, yeah. Batman, yeah, he was. Spider-Man's alter ego was a photographer for the news. The Flash, not the Flash, <laughs> but the Flash. Eminem, no, Ahmed, that's not, that's, no, Ahmed, stop. A case in point is Catwoman. Okay, because... A case in point is Catwoman because her alter, right? So I want you to finish the idea. Alter ego means different. You have two identities, not two personalities, but kind of. So for example, during the day, I'm an English teacher named Ken Tachikowski. And at night, I am a, I won't tell you. Uh, but anyways, if you, a superhero always has two identities. I have to be careful what I say. Uh, next one. Okay. Uh, yes. Strange doctor. Doctor Strange. Not Strange Doctor. Now that Doctor Strange. Okay. Anyways, so a case in point is uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spider-Man's name. Peter Parker is a normal man and who works at a newspaper. And in the evening, his alter ego is Spider-Man, a superhero who f f flings webs around the city and saves people. Uh, Judy's in the house. I had an internet connection. Yes, I can, Judy. Welcome. Glad you survived your internet problem. 
you can come be one of these animals. And here we go. Zoro. Yeah, Zoro had an alter ego. Yeah, that's right. Totally right. Okay, next one. Let's move on. This one is good. This one is good. Because now we're going to change it a little bit here. Next one is number six. Uh, Imini, I heard that you are a superhero. Mr. Kent, you make people learn English so fast. What a power. Oh, you're so right, Imini. It's just so fast they learn it with me. And by fast, I mean takes years. So, yeah, maybe not. Maybe my super, superhero power needs some practice yet. Uh, number six. This is a good one because I'm going to make you give a different type of example. So take a look at this one. Not being able to speak a second language. So basically, you cannot speak a second language. So not being able to speak a second language when you're living in a different country, living abroad, can make like, life difficult, much more difficult. Uh, imagine that. So now I'd like you to imagine. Hmm, use your brain. Uh, so what do you think? Document wasn't opened. Should be opened. Zoro is a superhero? Not really, but he was a hero for sure. Uh, so, so let me give. Can you give us an example here? So imagine you go to another country, maybe Canada, maybe Vancouver, and you're living abroad, but you you cannot speak the local language. Maybe your English isn't perfect, or your you go to France and your French isn't perfect. So imagine that you go to a coffee shop and you try to order coffee, but it's a little bit difficult because you don't speak that language. Imagine that, imagine that, imagine. So give us some imagine situations So about when life is difficult because you can't speak a second language. Munira, imagine that you met your favorite film star. Imagine that you cannot bargain. Yeah, you cannot e negotiate any better prices. Yeah, you, you cannot haggle. Haggle is another word, H-A-G-G-L-E. We use that for talking about negotiating prices, bargaining. Imagine you cannot bargain, you cannot haggle. Imagine, imagine when you are sick and you cannot explain your symptoms to the doctor. Yeah, that's real. You can't call emergency services because you can't communicate well enough. You get some illnesses, you, you develop some illnesses. Hey, what's up, A.E.? Get in here. Imagine that you're living in China and you have to go to the bathroom and you don't know how to say it. Actually, I know how to say it in Mandarin. It's, but it's the baby words. You say, I'm not joking. That's how you say, I want to go to the bathroom in Mandarin. But is like a little baby. It's like a kid's word, so it's kind of funny. But if you're ever in that situation and you gotta go, use it. That's how you do it. Does anyone speak Mandarin? Ni ni shuo ma ni ma wo yao niao niao. Okay, there we go. That's all. I, that's all I know. I know how to ask for beer also. Anyways, let's go ahead. Um, not being able. No 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 no. Imagine that you get lost. You are not able to find your way home. Exactly. Uh, imagine that you want to go to the toilet and you can't say a color you know. Except now you know how to do it in Mandarin. Now you know. I've taught you that. Imagine that you fell in love. Uh, Munir, that's not difficult. Remember, the topic is difficult situations. So, so be careful, guys, because not being able to speak. So imagine you are in another country and you can't speak English, for example. Uh, imagine that you want to go to the bathroom. You can't. Imagine that you want to order coffee. It's difficult. Imagine that you, you, you know what I mean? So those two sentences, this sentence here and this sentence here, must connect. They must be similar, similar ideas. And the situ situation for these ones was both were difficult. So be careful. Imagine that you want to go to a nightclub. Is that a problem, Noir? I guess. Imagine that you cannot share with your experience. So imagine that you cannot communicate your experiences, sure. Imagine that you want to date someone you don't know what to say, Powell, that could be a real one. Imagine that you have met a beautiful girl and you couldn't even ask her name. That could happen. Well, you might have to learn a few things. Excuse me, what is your name? In Mandarin, I have to find a job. Okay, we get the idea. So, of course, when we use that word, imagine, it's kind of like, for example, but we're giving a real situation. I want you to put yourself in this situation. Did that help you? Did these things help you? Probably not. Uh, mm. 
So when we use imagine, it's like, I want you to imagine this situation. So it's like, for example, but it's a little bit different. So we're going to look at some other words today as well. And I think I better jump into this uh, last one, mm, number seven, because I need to get, I think I'm talking too much. I might be talking too much. All right, here we go. Last one, number seven. Traveling in space. You guys know everything about traveling in space, don't you? Everybody does. It's common knowledge. Traveling in space presents many difficult, serious issues. In particular, in particular, why did I use that word? In particular, astronauts need to be concerned about... So give me the answer. And maybe there's one answer that's the best answer. So please give me that answer. So traveling in space presents many difficult issues, many serious issues. In particular, astronauts need to be concerned about oxygen is the answer. Gabby, thank you. You got it. I guess they need to be concerned about space. Uh, Gina, is that the biggest problem? Less gravity causing joint problems? Did you know that if humans spend too much time in space that their bones would disappear? I think Gina knows that. But if you spend if you spend too much time in space, your bones would disappear, and you would just be a, a mass of m basically muscle and fat and tissue. Interesting, right? So if we are going to travel to another planet in the future, I don't really think it's a good idea. We need to change ourselves or change the environment that we travel in. Space travel has some real serious problems that we need to start thinking about. But I think the biggest one is oxygen. Um, mental issues are some other. I think the biggest problem was oxygen. And I'm saying biggest problem because I want you to use this word in particular in a particular way. OK? So I think we're good. Let's jump in and let's talk about all these words that we used. So remember, the big word of the day, Kent's trying to sound smart, exemplification. Basically giving examples. So let's talk about it. Here we go. Today we are going to learn about linking words of exemplification. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Number one. Question number one is why do we use for example? Now this is pretty easy, but let's talk about it because maybe some people don't know. Why do we use for example? For example, if I say learning English is difficult, um, for example, you have to learn grammar. That's true. Why did I use for example? What was the purpose? And let me give you the answer. So what is the answer? Yeah. To, yeah. So we all know the answer, but let's just write it down if we can. To support our premise. Uh, what, what, uh, yeah, I used the word. I used a little different word. So let me change this word to shh. Demonstrate. The word I want to use is demonstrate. So this word here. And demonstrate means show. Oops, can't spell. You know what I mean. You know, everybody knows, for example, right? So why do we use it? We use it to demonstrate a previous idea. So if your first idea is learning English is difficult, it's negative. And my second idea has to be also negative, right? So when people in the chat were doing like positive and negative, it's like, no, no, no. Those ideas have to connect. So if you say learning English is difficult, that's a negative idea. For example, you have to learn grammar. Learning grammar also has to be a negative idea. They have to connect, so connect them. Next, what is a similar way to say for example? So here's a question for you. Now, I've given you some help, so life is easier. So what are some different ways to say for example? I'll help you out with these. Here's another one. And I'm giving some personal ones as well where you can use the word I. Yeah, for instance, that's an easy one, right? So that's one way we can do it for sure. You can say for instance. What's another one? And I might have used a few in my warm up. To illustrate, thank you very much. That's a good one as well. And again, all of these things, be careful, they all, they all have some things. To give you an example, thank you very much, Powell. To give you an example. And you could also say, to give you an example, you could also say of this if you want. 
So you can add of this if you want, your choice. Uh, no idea. Uh, to give to show you what I mean. Thank you very much, Tatiana. To show you what I mean. There's another one. Not show you. You need more than that. You probably need a preposition, maybe a four or a two, right? So you can see there's a lot of prepositions when we use these words. And I think that's all. So we got for instance, we got to illustrate to give you an idea, and that's really informal, isn't it? And we're going to do about that as well. To show you what I mean is also pretty informal. So be careful when you use these. Next one. Next question is this, of course. And I always ask this question because people always make mistakes. What do we always need to use after these expressions? For example, to illustrate, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You've, you've done it with me before, and you know what makes teachers crazy. English teachers specifically, you're totally right. You need a comma. You've got to have a comma, for instance. So whenever there's a for, or a to, or a with, or an in, you can safely use a comma, and you're rocking and or rolling. Next one. Next question is this. Hello, Faizan. Get in here. Does such have, does such as, does such as have the same meaning as for example, so if I say, for example, you can do this, or you can do something such as this, do those ideas have, are they the same, or are they a little bit different? Yep, Mini says yep, Sally says yep, anyone else? Ahmed says yep, yep, mm -hmm. yep, everyone's sure? The same? Correct, you're all right. Hi, Faizan, <laughs> we got you, come in here, we're working right now. Here, Faizan, take with this. Take this, open it up, and join us, and you, okay, you can jump in and learn uh, everything that we're working on right now. So, next one. Uh, let's get rid of that. Now, this is pretty straightforward. What is the difference between them? If I say, if, if I use for example, or if I use such as, what is the position? What's the position difference? And think about sentences and where, where should you use those words? But actually, you know what? My first example is not really good. Now, I said usually. Keep that in mind. I said usually. Not always, but usually. So for example, let me do that again. Because I'm going to show you a different example later. So what is the example? Yes, I think you got it all. For example, yeah. So for example, usually goes at the Beginning, and Tatiana, you are also correct. Uh, you can use it in the middle of the sentence, but I, I'm going to focus on the beginning, and maybe it's an IELTS thing, because remember, when we use these words, we want the examiner to see them, and that's why it might be a better idea just to put them in the beginning, but you're totally right. Of course, you can put it in the middle as well. I'm going to show you some examples of that right away. And such as usually goes in the middle of the sentence as well. You're totally right. So for example, you can, there are many things you can do in Vancouver, such as go to Capilano Suspension Bridge, hang out with me and have coffee, go to Stanley Park, go to Cypress Mountain, all of those things. So such as generally is going to be in the middle of the sentence. Next one. <laughs> now, Ariana, which one are you talking about at the end? Which one can be at the end? Are you talking about for example, or are you talking about such as? Usually at the beginning, I agree. We usually, it's, usually we put it there, but it can be in the middle as well, and maybe in another position. Let's find out. So next one, do these expressions have the same meaning? Mm -hmm. Number one is a good illustration of this. Number two, uh, does such as need a comma after? No, amen. No comma after such as. Do all of these have the same meaning as well? A case in point is, a good example of this is, and a good illustration of this is all the same. Correct, so they're all the same. So now you have three ways to do it. Now, the, maybe I'll add one more question. Where, how do I use these? You have two ideas, right? Uh, there are, so if I said, there are many things you can do in Vancouver, finished new sentence, a good illustration of this is, right? So I would use it in the same way, 
uh, for example, would be the new sentence with a comma, but a good illustration and a good example and a case in point would be a new sentence, no comma, okay? So just kind of like if you look at number four and number five, you can see there's no comma, okay? Next one. Next one is imagine. Can we use those? Of course you can, Alex. Yeah, good point. These Use these in your writing, but you can also use them in your speaking. These are linking words. We use these all the time to give examples, or first, secondly, third. We use them all the time. So yes, absolutely, use them in your speaking as well. Next one. Next word is imagine. Why and when do we use the word imagine? So I say imagine that you are living in Vancouver. What is life like? Hmm, what are you doing right now? What are you visiting on the weekend? So why do we use imagine? Yeah, I tried to make it simple, but yes, correct. When we want the reader, the person who's reading, sorry, we should say reader or listener, because it's really both. It's like I said, it's for speaking as well. So it's not only about reading. So let's change that. So we, we want a reader or a listener to imagine Another si imagine you are in a situation. We want the reader or listener to imagine themselves in the situation. So for example, imagine that you are me. Imagine that you are rich. Imagine that you are poor. Imagine that you are super good looking, which you are, of course you are. We all are, we're all amazing good looking. Okay, so yeah, we just want people to imagine a specific situation. So it's basically very similar to for example, right? Uh, so, what is another way to say imagine that? So let's have a chat. Imagine that. What's another way to say imagine that? Da 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 that, da 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 that, and da 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 that. I, hopefully I didn't forget the third one. Suppose that. Very nice, Tatiana. Say that. Mm, only human. Yes, you're right, only human, but only on number three. And there's one word you forgot before that. Not think about, unfortunately. Suppose is correct, not think. In English, I don't know why, but we don't say. We don't say think that you are a teacher. No, we only say imagine or suppose, correct? So suppose is one. Imini's got it. Let's say is the third one. And again, you can say that or know that. So you can say suppose that, that's cool. Or you can say let's say. Now, which one is informal? Think about that. So let's say that. And what's the third one? Oh, oh, you gave me a new one. Thank you very much, Tatiana. It's the one I had was not actually picture that. I was actually thinking uh, pretend, pretend that. But yeah, thank you very much. Now I have another one. Yeah. So you can say, suppose that, suppose that you are an English teacher. Pretend that you are an English teacher. Picture that you are an English teacher. Or let's say that you are an English teacher. Uh, so now the next question, so let me add another one. Mm -hmm. So there we go, so we got those two. Uh, so next, the next question is, visualize that. Uh, visualize, not bad, but it sounds a little unusual. Which one of these is definitely, thank you, you guys got it. Yeah, definitely, let's say, is the most informal. They're all kind of, they're, none of those are really formal, actually, right? If you say imagine, we wouldn't really use that in academic writing. And if we said picture that, we wouldn't really use that in academic writing. So actually, they're kind of all semi-formal or informal. So yeah, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I probably wouldn't use those in academic writing. I might use a good illustration of this is. That sounds formal, right? Or a good example of this, or a case in point. Those all sound, usually formal is longer, and informal has contractions, let's say, or short words. So imperatives, imagine that. That's not really formal. So I agree. Choose the more formal ones. Next one. What is the difference between the underlined words? This is a good one. This is a good question. So, hypothetically speaking, yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, they're all hypothetical. They're all hypothetically speaking. 
If we use that, I think it's more formal. I don't really think so, Nana. I think it's um, just choose a good example of this. That's definitely formal. For example is fine. For instance is fine. Now, the next one is kind of interesting. So I'd like you to look at these two sentences. <laughs> JB, that's cool, man. You're, you're here. You're here now, and that's all that matters. Welcome, buddy. All right, so look at those two. Now, the ideas, now, of course, the sentences are different. But it says here, what is the difference between the underlined words? That's really the point here. So learning to drive is difficult. For example, you, sorry, you have to. Let's change that to you, you have to. You have to learn the rules of the road. That's true. OK. Yeah, but Igor, they both give your opinion, don't they? They're both, well, they're not really opinions. They're not your opinion, necessarily. But look at those two. Learning to drive is difficult. For example, you have to learn the rules of the road. Yeah. Number two, listen again, learning, learning to drive is difficult. In particular, you have to be careful not to hurt anyone else. What the hell? What, is it, what the heck is the difference between, lear, uh, for example, and in particular? Yes, Gabby, I think you're right. One of them is like especially, E, don't forget your E. You have answer, mechanical questions? Mm, I don't think so. Writing about a specific, Denise, in particular, focuses on the one thing, for example, is more general. I agree with that, Denise. It definitely does focus more on one. Anything else? Imini, correct. I think Imini's got it. In particular, to show a very important idea. JB, uh, in particular, to give a specific example. Well, I mean, for example, is specific as well, right? Gives details, a broad one. I agree with uh, especially, and I also agree with the mini. In particular, it shows a very important idea. Like maybe the number one idea, the number one idea that you want to explain, we would say in particular. So for example, learning to drive is difficult. For example, you have to learn the rules of the road. You have to pass a test. You have to practice before the test. Many, many, many things. And they're, we can kind of imagine that they're all equal. They're all kind of the same. But if I say, if I change my sentence and I say learning to drive is, is difficult, in particular, the most important kind of idea, the most important example is that you have to be careful not to hurt anyone else. That's really number one. So if I want to really talk about the number one idea, I'm going to use in particular. Make sense? Yeah, in particular does refer to one thing. You're right. Um, so let's see. Now, how did I? Yeah, I kind of did that. Mm, you guys have some good good words here. You do. You are referring to one idea. I mean, for example, does refer to one idea as well, right? For example, you have to learn the rules of the road. But if I say in particular, it feels stronger, doesn't it? Uh, in particular is like especially correct. So I agree. It's totally like that. So we use. I tried to. It's difficult to explain sometimes. So we use this one. We use, for example, to show that an idea is equal, equal. Sorry, I'm giving answers. Don't give answers. We, we use this to show that an idea is equal to the others. Like, they're all kind of equally, right? They're all difficult, and they're all kind, kind of equal. But if I say in particular, it basically means, what does it mean? We use in particular to show that this idea is, in this case, especially, not specifically, um, specifically, Gertie. Uh, I think that would be the one. That's the one you want to use. But it, it's it is similar to especially, and maybe I should put those two. Ooh, you're right. Specifically and especially. Ooh, I forgot especially. I have to do it. Yes, Nelson. I think you're. That's the one, right? We use in particular to show that this idea, this one idea, is particularly stronger than the others, right? Like number one for me. I don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah, I have to learn the rules of the road. Those, all the other things are difficult. But number one for me, I don't want to hurt anybody when I'm driving my car. So that's why. Uh, what is another way to say in particular? Next one. So here we go. What is another way to say in particular? And here's a few examples. They're very sim Some of them are similar. Da 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 and da da da. You got three here. What are some different ways to say in particular? Specifically, yes. 
specifically. Particularly, yes, Sally, correct, very nice. Specifically was one. Oh, JB, you're on it today. You came in late and you, you made up for it. Specifically was one, particularly was two, and namely was three. Very nice, okay? So you can basically use all of those and they have the same idea as in particular. It's just another way to say. To be specific, mm, to be specific, to be specific, you have to be careful to be specific. Hmm. Good question. I feel like it's somehow a little bit different. But is it the same? Which one is more informal and formal? Uh, there are, I would say, in particular, sounds the most formal. Particularly, it doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound informal. In particular, sounds the most formal. Is there another one? Namely. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, that's in particular. That's the only that's the only answer I have for you. Maybe there's more ways to say it and I just didn't didn't see them or I didn't find them. To be exact, to be exact. Oh. Is that changing the meaning? In particular means it's strong, right? It's like that's really the number one thing. And if you say to be exact, I don't know if that's the same meaning. Maybe I need more. Maybe I need more words. Maybe I need to make this lesson a little bit bigger next time. Great question. Okay, and the other one we have to do is especially. Uh, next one. So what do we always use after these? Okay, you know the answer to this one. It does sound different, doesn't it? It sounds a little bit different. Like to be exact means to be, like try to be as accurate as possible. And to be more specific also sounds to be as accurate as possible. So for me, I feel like it changed it just a little bit that it's not perfectly the same. Comma, 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 comma. Thank you very much. Good. Next. Uh, last one. This is the one that I wanted to add, and Tatiana was already on it. Are all these sentences correct? Number one. Number two. And number three. Rock climbing is difficult. Uh, for example, you have to learn how to support your weight. That's true. Number two, rock climbing is difficult because, for example, you have to learn to support your own weight. Number three, rock climbing is difficult because you have to learn to support your own weight, for example. What do you think? Number two is wrong. Say yes. Second is wrong. First is wrong. Number one is okay, for example. Number three is wrong. Oh, this is interesting. This is this is working out great. Gabby, what do you think? Yeah, she's got it already there. Yes. Can we say because and for example in the same time? Yes. Oh, I gave an answer. Sorry, I gave an answer. Correct answer. Also, Gertie got it. A bunch of oh, Tatiana, no, Tatiana. I believe, I believe that that answer is correct. That it's possible. Some people might prefer more of a style, more of a style thing. They might say rock climbing is difficult because you have to learn to support your own weight, comma, for example. But it should be fine even without the comma. So yes, you could add a comma because it's at the end, and that should be safe. That should still be safe. But I believe that that is also correct. Okay, so basically, uh, all of them should be correct. All of them should be fine. So you can use, for example, in the middle of a sentence. Do I recommend it? Do I not recommend it? No. Uh, but I would say, if you're doing IELTS, if you're doing FCE, if you're doing CAE, if you're doing PTE, I would say try to use those words at the beginning of the sentence because remember, you want your examiner to see them and be like, oh, there's a linking word. There's a linking word. Oh, points, points, points. Get more points. So don't hide your linking words when you're doing when you're writing your own style yeah go ahead do whatever you want but i would say when you're doing academic english tests try to make those words visible and that's why you put them at the beginning of the sentence super clear nice organized okay let me just share this document one more time now the last word i had was especially and i believe that especially 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 is generally at the end of an idea. Uh, so for example, but that's weird. Hmm, I don't know. 
points, points, points. Hello, Australia. Exactly. Uh, so, um, living abroad is hard. Normally, we would do this, especially speaking another language. That would be, so I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but especially is generally, generally done like that. Living abroad is hard. You get your first idea. And then you can use a comma, not specially, especially. Latin speakers, you can now say especially. Uh, so especially speaking another language, right? So it's a, it's a connecting idea, but it's, follow, it's a comma and then especially, generally. Generally, that's how we use especially. And sp uh, specifically, we don't say specially at the beginning of a sentence. Do we use especially at the beginning of a sentence? Good question. I might have to Google that. Can we use especially at the beginning? Do we do that? It may not be formal or good style, but it is grammatical. OK, so it says grammatically it's correct to use especially at the beginning of a sentence or the comma. The sen second sentence under consider, especially if you're dehydrated, it could merely be. Do, 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 do. So it says that it makes, this is just one website, but it says that it makes sense using especially at the beginning, but it might be bad, not amazing style. So there we go. So it seems to be OK. It is acceptable. Yeah. So maybe it's changing. So maybe people are doing. So maybe we can use both. Uh, especially, especially at the beginning is okay. It's possible. Some people may think it's bad style. Uh, okay, so let me just put that example. Is this sentence OK? Mm, living abroad is hard, especially when you don't speak the language. And the answer is yes, this sentence is OK. OK, so there you go. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, what about semicolon? No, no, I'll be honest, we don't use semicolons that often in English anymore, and they seem to be disappearing a lot more. So usually when you have two ideas, but they're, they're both very important, sometimes we put a semicolon in the middle to show that they're both. But honestly, don't use semicolons, just use a period, and you're good. Uh, is hard, especially speaking, is it correct? Is hard, something is hard. Yeah, don't use the don't use the semicolon. No, no, just use a, just use a comma and you're good to go. Okay, so there's a little note. Um, I think that's everything. We got it. Boom. So I think we did. Oh, the last question is this, uh, and then I think I'll let you go. I guess we didn't get time. See, I'm talking too much. I'm gonna stop talking. Uh, why is it important to use a variety of exemplification words? For example, for instance, in particular. Um, a good example of this is why should we use those words? And the answer is, thank you, Lale. Thank you, Judy. You totally rocked it. Because you don't want to repeat words often in writing. When we do IELTS and when we do these academic tests, if you say, for example, for example, for example, for example, you sound like a robot. And we think, ah, this student does not know other vocabulary. So we say, OK, we'll give you this score, but we won't give you that score. Because for example, for example, it's repetitive. But if you control a little more variety, we say, ooh, look at that student. They said a good example of this. They used an exemplification word. We'd be like, oh, yeah, boom. And then you get up, OK? So that's really the, if those are my, I was using my IELTS eyes when I, when I talk about stuff like that. If you use the same word again and again, it's kind of bad. So you do want to show a variety. And some will be short. So don't just say, for example, for instance. Use a variety. Say one time you can say, for example, and the next time you might say a good example of this is or a good 
a case in point is. So if you show those words, those are combinations of words, they might get you a little bit more in the vocab points and they'll definitely get you more cohesion and coherence points. Okay, so that's really the thing. Um, Malaika, if we use some idioms, our writing sounds too informal. Yeah, so Malaika, it depends on what kind of writing you're doing. If you're doing uh, informal writing, then of course you can use idioms and it's fine. But if you're doing a semi-formal, you probably won't want to use them. And if you're doing a formal, then of course you don't want to use them because that would be like your tone is incorrect. You're using the wrong words in the wrong situation. Okay, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. There's a little, a little IELTS academic English thing about different ways to say example. I need to go home and do some more homework. Especially to be more specific, I need to learn about those words to be more specific and to be more exact. Um, I think, I think I know the answer, but I have to add it to that lesson for sure. So, anyways, the future students will get the the benefit of that. Mwah! Big kiss. Hope you guys enjoyed that. We will be back tomorrow for another amazing exciting adventure probably probably not IELTS tomorrow but something a little more a little more chill a little more relaxed other than that we'll be back same smart time 2 p.m. Wednesdays and Thursdays love you all big kiss big hug see you tomorrow have a great day uh, bye bye